सभी को नमस्ते गुड मॉर्निंग वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट यू एच वी थ्री अंडरस्टैंडिंग नेचर एंड एग्जिस्टेंस कॉम्प्रिहेंसिवली एंड इन दैट वी वर ऑन लेक्चर फोर येस्टरडे वी ब्रीफली टूक अ लुक एट और टॉक अ लिटल बिट अबाउट द एग्जिस्टेंस दैट द एग्जिस्टेंस इज इन द फॉर्म ऑफ को एग्जिस्टेंस and it is ever present it was there it is there and it continues to be there and if we look at this existence this coexistence is of units that are submerged in space the two are being talked of separately because these are two separate realities the units are a different reality the space is a different reality in the units you find that the units are limited in size but if you look at space space has no boundary it is unlimited then if you look at the units you find units have activity but if you look at space what you say shunya in hindi or kriya shunyata no activity then if you look at the units these are also of two distinct types so you have the material units and you have the consciousness units material units are temporary they you can see that they are formed and then they are deformed so this is a cyclic kind of a process formation happens then deformation happens and an example of the material is the body of course there are many things outside you can see but for our purposes what is most significant right now it is we can start with the body if we understand the body we can also understand other material units so the body we can see that it is a temporary unit there is birth then the body grows it grows in height it grows you know that there are more and more cells being formed in the body and the size of the cells also keeps increasing up to a point and these processes of formation and deformation are going on in the body at the same time as the body gets older earlier the formation is more deformation is less so there is growth in the body later formation is less deformation is more and eventually as the body gets old there is death of the body and death is just that the body the contents of the body they deteriorate and then we either burn the body we bury the body but it goes back to the elements of the nature so this is a cyclic process if you look at the consciousness unit the consciousness unit the self it is continuous so we are not talking of a birth and death of the self the self is continuous in time but it is still limited in size 
as opposed to the self. So now you can see that there are three realities. If you look at the different characteristics, you find that there are three realities. The material reality, for example, the body, the consciousness reality, that is the self, and the space. And how they are interacting, how they are interconnected, for that we have to understand each reality. And that is what we are trying to do in this process. So the body is limited in size and it is temporary in time. The consciousness is limited in size but continuous in time. And if you look at the space, the space is unlimited. Unlimited in time, unlimited in size. No boundaries at all. Unbounded in time and space. We also talked about the responses that are there in the material and the consciousness units. So in the material unit, we said that there is recognizing and fulfilling. That there is already, we don't have to create this, we don't have to do this. It is already there that there is you know, in all the material units, the units recognize their relationship with each other and fulfill their relationship in a very definite manner. So, if you look at the body, the body. Uh, so you give it some food, it is assimilated in a certain way, digested, and that whole process is happening in a very specific manner. If you look at the consciousness, if you look at the self, you find that this recognition and fulfillment is of course there, but it is not definite. And why it is not definite is because it is either on the basis of assuming without understanding or you can say assume or assuming or you can say accepting with understanding. And that makes all the difference. So if I assume I don't have a relationship with somebody else. Then my recognition and fulfillment is in accordance with that assumption. But if I can see my relationship with the other, now my recognition and fulfillment is different. So this recognition and fulfillment fluctuates. So you'll find that the human being is the only one in this existence that has this fluctuation. And this, that too, in the human being, it is the self, where this indefiniteness is there. The body is definite. The body doesn't have any issues. But when it comes to the self, Self directs the body a certain way based on assumptions. And until and uh, unless those assumptions, those acceptances are based on knowing, they may keep changing. And so the behavior, the recognition, fulfillment also changes. And therefore you see that the human beings have indefinite conduct. 
But once we get to knowing, once we are able to see things exactly the way they are, then our previous assumptions, some of them may have been right. They stay with us. Those that were not in line, they get dropped. And with that, our recognition and fulfillment becomes definite. Then there is possibility of definiteness in human conduct. Just as there is in the material. So this much we had talked about yesterday. And to reflect on in the assignment, we had spoken of reflecting on how much time and effort we spend and have been spending on what is temporary and how much time and effort we spend on that which is continuous. So we accumulate wealth, we focus on what skills to get, we focus on, you know, academically learning more. And what we learn in the, whatever is there in the B2 block, that is again going to, you know, after the death of the body, whatever was there in the B2 block, that will have to be redone, start from the beginning. That's why each time we have to go through learning ABCs, learning the language, all of that. Whatever is there in the B1 block, however much we make effort and are able to see in the B1 block, there, there is possibility of continuity. So if we are making effort for right understanding, we are making effort for continuity. If we are just, you know, going on in the B2 block without any guidance from the B1 block, that means we are just recycling whatever we hear, whatever we see from outside, and we keep replaying that, isn't it? We don't pick up anything new from within. It is just whatever we hear from outside, whatever we see, whatever somebody says, whatever somebody is doing, our experience based on what somebody's behavior is like, and so on. And then we keep replaying that within us. That's what it is about the B2 block. So that is cyclic. That will not last. But whatever effort we make in the B1 block for understanding, there there is possibility of continuity. So we have many sanskars. These sanskars continue with us. The body dies, the sanskars in the self continue. And with these sanskars, you know, in the next journey, we start with those sanskars. So ultimately, are we spending time on correcting our sanskars, bringing them in line? with understanding, bringing them in line with the natural acceptance? Or are we spending time mostly on the temporary? For now, we can just think of, we can talk about the self later. We will discuss all that later. For now, if we just limit to, you know, body and self, we can see where we are making that effort. So we can take your reflections about this. Uh, Didi, I have a question. Uh, you said that consciousness units uh, are also limited in size. 
mm-hmm. that means self is limited in size that one i could not understand like how in size it is limited yeah it's not like continuously there like uh, there is some limit to the size it's not like just as the body has a limit you can see that because you can see with the gross eye hmm self is more subtle so we are not able to see it hmm it has a limit to its size it's not an unlimited boundless thing but it is not limited in time it yes. is continuous in time meaning hmm not that it is going to die down and be finished it is there it was there before it is there it will be there hmm but the space it is occupying or you can say you know i don't know how i to say it that it is limited in size i mean right now we may not be able to um validate this hmm But that's okay. We can keep it as an open proposal till we are able yes. to explore it more and be able to see it for ourselves. Yes. But because we are talking about this now, so we brought it up. But not necessary that we will be able to see everything that is being talked of. Hmm. And whatever we are not able to see for ourselves, we should keep it as an open proposal. Don't believe it, but don't disbelieve it also. Right. Hmm. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Still, there is a doubt that why self is uh, limited like that uh, as compared to body. Uh, second is that uh, then how long it would continue? Like body, we can see decomposing is there, uh, but uh, self then how long it would continue like that way? Is there any uh, that uh, can you highlight on that? Yes, yeah, see the difference that. between limited in size uh-huh. and time. We are not saying it uh-huh. is limited in time, uh-huh. isn't it? We are uh-huh. saying it is continuous in time. Uh-huh. That means it was there, it is there, it will be there. In time, it is continuous. Uh-huh. But so we cannot uh, means. I have any idea about like that how long it would continue this way even the <laughs> self <laughs> if it is continuous in time that means it will continue no acha theek theek didi acha aaj second one didi that uh, the, okay that we are listening and learning right uh, the existence equal to coexistence means actually uh, the if coexistence is there there is a uh, existence otherwise there is no existence i think then did is your existence equal to coexistence it would just uh, means that existence is there right ha. we can see that existence is there ha correct what is How being said by understand. equal to coexistence just means ha. that it is in the form of coexistence this is yeah. how it is ha uh-huh. ha that so the existence is in the form of this coexistence of units submerged uh-huh. in space you cannot uh-huh. separate this out separate. we cannot separate correct ha uh-huh. so this is how it is ha uh-huh. if coexistence is there existence is there otherwise not uh-huh. no 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 but hmm. what do you mean by coexistence is there then existence is there Existence is only in the form of coexistence. Ha, huh. isn't it? Ha, huh. it is just there. It is there. Ha, huh. it is there, and it. If we try to look into it, hmm. we find that it is in the form of coexistence. Coexistence means we have to understand actually, and the coexistence part we are understanding actually day by day, day by day. We are uh, realizing that it is there, yeah. but. Our part is to understand, like that. So they, yes. We say from that uh, animal consciousness to human consciousness. More and more, we are having the consciousness uh, towards that, so we can understand. 
more and more yes so mm -hmm. as we go deeper into the subject as mm -hmm. we explore more correct we will see more and more this what we are talking about this code ah. how everything is interconnected mm. the very foundation for that is this space mm. that is interconnecting everything that is the code yeah yeah didi acha last day was having that one question actually though you are discussing that that actually the distinction between uh that uh, uh, that um, testing and comparing testing is okay that like you told that it is static once i have uh, had a taste for a sweet particular that you are searching that type of sweet etc that we un understand the comparing also come under the uh, static uh, activity but uh, I, I i didn't get uh, that much did i comparing means once i have compared then i will keep it with that so they need to be like that also i have testing. i have some basis for comparison ha 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 correct correct basis okay Achha, on the didi. basis of comparison wait wait let me finish on the basis ha. of comparison mm -hmm. basis of that uh, you know on which i am comparing analyzing mm. on that i analyze and analyze. i analyze isn't it so if i my basis for comparison is say the expense hmm something that i am doing and i want to um whatever we had taken the example of build a house or you know hmm. buy a car whatever may be the thing hmm. now if my basis for comparison is hmm. the expense hmm. then i will analyze you know how much funds hmm. i have where i can get them right so mm -hmm. i already have that basis Ajay, that didi, in that didi. are you able to follow this first before you ha, go ha. first ha, ha. so on that basis of you know that the basis for which or on which i am comparing on that mm -hmm. basis i analyze and i come to some decision about it mm -hmm. does that make sense Mm -hmm. uh, Didi, I, I am getting actually confused then that testing and comparing because in testing also once I have tested something, so I have make it a base or yet stick within that uh, I was so searching. That, uh, no, this is why when the question came about static and dynamic activity, this hmm. is why we were taking these examples to explain, and you huh. will also see that in the hmm. case of the imaging, the desire. Hmm. we didn't talk of it that time but since the question has come up <laughs> now when we don't have access to the higher activities when we are not taking guidance from the higher activities huh. now there is no you know that state activity is missing Achha. when it comes to the imaging part <laughs> isn't it? yeah so in this <laughs> slide you can see now in the case of imaging imaging that state activity part is dormant we are not able to access it to begin mm. with mm. isn't it? so here there is no basis for us within Achy. us there is nothing yes. isn't it therefore mm. our imaging is affected by the outside mm. because this is missing in us mm. missing in the sense we have not awakened to it Right. Can you see? Mm -hmm. So there, in the state activity, right? You know, in the beginning, when we are not yet exploring, when we are not looking, we have been looking outside. Our mm -hmm. desires are coming from outside, from preconditioning, mm -hmm. from sensation, because there is no basis for us mm -hmm. within. Mm -hmm. But as we awaken to the activity of contemplation. as we awaken to the activity of contemplation mm. now there is a base mm. within us we have mm. this um we can see the relationship mm. now that becomes the base for my desire for my imaging 
for my mm -hmm. feeling. Mm -hmm. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. That is So while the feeling earlier was affected by the outside, mm -hmm. whatever is happening outside is influencing my feeling. That's because inside I'm not getting anything from there. But as I keep exploring, as I keep referring to the natural acceptance, slowly mm. I become aware of this activity of contemplation. Mm. Once I become aware of this activity of contemplation, mm. and I am able to see the relationship with the other, now the whole picture changes. Mm. Now that, that is what is there within me. And on the basis of that, I set my feeling. Mm. You see like that? So that's how it goes. That's how we were trying to give examples for state activity and dynamic activity. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Mm -hmm. the, this is the important work that we have to do. We have to mm -hmm. finally unfold all these mm -hmm. higher activities within us mm -hmm. so that there, from there we take guidance. That becomes the basis. Mm -hmm. And on that basis, we take decisions, we, you know, have the dynamic activity. Mm -hmm. The words are not important, state and dynamic. Mm -hmm. What is important is to see that when the higher activities have not opened up for us or we have not awakened to them, we are taking mm -hmm. all this input from outside. Mm -hmm. Isn't it? And we think we are deciding, but it's really coming from outside. Mm. It's only when we awaken to the higher activities that we realize. Mm. Slowly, bit by bit, we are able to see the relationship. We are able to understand the harmony. We are able to see the coexistence. Then it all becomes very clear. And that mm. becomes the basis for my, you know, whatever decisions I take, whatever I determined to do, whatever further I do, everything this becomes the basis. Mm. And then it naturally comes down to my feeling is based on this, therefore my thoughts are based on this, therefore my behavior also becomes mm. that way and that is definite. That mm. is not changing because mm. in the existence this is how it is. There is relationship, there is harmony, there is coexistence. Mm. And even though these higher activities are not opened up in us, in us, still a glimpse of that is available to us in the form of the natural acceptance. Mm, correct. On the basis of the natural acceptance, we can see, if we ask ourselves, we can see that we have a natural acceptance for relationship, yes. for harmony, yes. for coexistence. That's because that glimpse is there. But we mm. have to unfold it fully. Only when we refer to the natural acceptance, we are able to have that feeling. Otherwise, mm. we flip back to our assumptions, our sanskars. Isn't it? Correct. So we have to open up these higher activities. Ultimately, only that can lead to the definiteness in conduct. Yeah. Didi? Yes. Didi, in the B1 uh, block, actually, see, we have more state activity. Again, I am asking on that. The state activity is more and dynamic activity is less. Does it mean that we are more stable in B B1? We become more stable even we take uh, the dynamic activity as compared to that uh, B2 level, less. That we are more stable. I there. don't think you can say less and more. Achha. That becomes the basis for the activities that we are hmm. having. Na? The dynamic part, hmm. the basis for that is the state activity. Uh -huh. Isn't it? So when Did the we... B1 block is not, we have not awakened to it, there is Opened nothing up. Uh -huh. for us to take that. Uh -huh. So we take it from outside. Uh -huh. Our way of looking at things is all based on the outside. Mm. But as this opens up within us, Correct. then we are able to see more and more mm. and see the pattern. And now this becomes the basis. Mm. 
logically try to see this but really speaking you know it is more subtle than that so therefore you are not able to see it of course we can get into more details about the the this limitation in size and all but i think it is it, it will suffice it to say we'll go into more detail later also about these uh, things but i think it suffices to say that you know why it is like that is not a question to ask that is how it is we just have to understand it so space yeah, is so part of harmony huh? it is part of existence yeah very yeah it is how it oh. is so yeah, we yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we ask why it has become like this or yeah, then there will be there will be lot of questions like that. I know, and 
then we can logically try to give many reasons why it has yeah. become like this but point is it is just there and okay. rather than question why it is there i think we need to understand it. we haven't understood it also so okay. at least we must understand it very good thank you thank you thank you the question how much time you spend on body and this self so i was doing this exercise i was able to see uh, that uh, much time was spent on the body material than the self one i think uh, to spend more time on the self i uh, one matlab uh, need to get free from some work a stable mind settle thing but then when we are doing our daily chores uh it becomes thoda difficult to continue concentrating um uh, much on this self so it becomes on and off like yeah uh, huh. yeah true uh, hmm. yeah you wanted to say something more i'll let you finish and then i'll respond ha uh, in short i'll uh, sum up like when uh, like couple of year, uh, one year before i met with the uh, surgery is couple of surgeries related to tumor and it has formed third time also so i used to become restless or unhappy when why this is happening with my body but for the moment because in that hospital also i try to focus on this self exploration the moment i feel no body is different it's temporary self is continuous nothing is happening in the self that moment only we feel a feeling of fearlessness and yes. some happiness and i was feeling ki ye moment should be continued the mm-hmm. feeling of happiness and the same thing when we see with the other other body and self is also different so when others go away uh, like a few days before i talked about my uh, mother she is not so that time also if i am able to see this correctly then i should not feel unhappy or fear so True. want and for uh, the practice should be this should be constant remembrance constant work effort on this then we will be able to do this that's what i want to say i'm, I'm done yeah so when we say constantly remember right now it is like that because we are so tuned to the body even though we have this information that you know i am the self i am continuous the body is a temporary unit it will die even though i have all this information i haven't seen it myself it's only there in my thoughts it is there as information therefore i have to keep trying to recall that and i keep forgetting so called forgetting actually it's because i haven't been able to directly see it so whatever is there as information i have to keep making effort to recall at especially at moments when you know i am not aware and it slips again again i go back to my old sanskar of i am body can you see so that drives my feeling so if i am if i haven't been able to see this eventuality that i am the self i am continuous the body is the one that is dying or is you know not there anymore that it is temporary now i if i am i can see it then there is no question of remembering or trying to recall because i have directly seen it it is there i already have that within me can you see that mm-hmm. so okay. to reach that state to begin with we have to make lot of effort when we come to the exercises have you done the exercises before yes ma'am yes i have done it exercise 1 and 2 yes yes i have done it okay. so in the exercises also what we say in the beginning is take time out spend at least half an hour by yourself or close your eyes at a time when you are not likely to be disturbed by anything outside 
एट अ टाइम वेन यू आर नॉट ब्रशिंग एनी वेयर है ना सो यू टेक दैट टाइम यू सिट बाई योर सेल्फ क्लोज योर आईज एंड देन स्टार्ट लुकिंग इन वर्ड दिस वॉट वी से सो वाई इज दैट बिकॉज इन द बिगिनिंग वेन यू आर बिजी डूइंग अदर थिंग्स यू गेट डिस्ट्रैक्टेड बिकॉज यू आर लुकिंग आउटवर्ड यू आर सींग थिंग्स आउटवर्ड and that is distracting you and you are not able to pay attention inward so to begin with you need to sit down you need to close your eyes and you need to look inside it doesn't mean that when you close the eyes everything about the outside shuts off you will still have many thoughts but you just keep observing the thoughts don't get into the thoughts don't get into you know involving with the thoughts but you just observe and then slowly once you know you develop some amount of competence you will find you can do this with eyes open also you will find you can do this while you are doing all the activities also and now it is no longer a like a strain it's no longer that it is either this or that it's no longer that i have to pay attention outside therefore i can't pay attention inside it becomes both you are able to do both that potential is there in all of us we just have to you know spend some take some make some effort spend some time and develop that competence so when we do the exercises we'll talk more about that yeah yes madam ji so ultimately i take effort on distinguishing this understanding this then slowly i need not take explicit effort on spending more time on uh, self and less time on body it will become automatic no oh, yeah. it will become automatic because i will see what is significant for me then i will spend that much see today what is happening many a time i'm not saying for you or anybody in particular but lot of times what happens is people say let's do this let's do that for time pass so what is that time pass so if you have you know free time you might want to turn inward and look into the self in that time because that's where if you you know keep exploring within if you keep spending time inside being able to see things more and more clearly inside that's how you're going to unfold these activities from outside you cannot unfold these activities within you if somebody is referring to that that is also information that's just going to add to more words it increases your vocabulary perhaps but it doesn't help you in any way to understand things better isn't it so we can go into lot of depth about the details of the self and all but really what does it matter it will just add to more information within us until and unless we directly see it for ourselves it is of no use to us because it will not come in our living until we have seen it that's why we keep saying nobody can you cannot make somebody understand you can help in the process you can make the effort you can give some pointers but ultimately the reality has to be seen by each one of us within us there is no other way yeah all right thank you madam ji thank you so this is what we talked of about the existence so far now in this you can see that the same thing in a little more detail has been put in this chart so here you can see existence is in the form of coexistence with units being submerged in space and if you look at the units the units you will find they have particular characteristics we already spoke of a couple units are limited in size they are active there is activity in these units some or the other activity is there in these units 
you also find that each of these units is self organized things are happening in a particular manner and that is so in a particular organized manner so if you look at the body you know in the body there are so many systems you have circulatory system you have um respiratory system you have digestive system you have nervous system so many systems are there in the body and if you look at all the way down to the cells you have trillions of cells in the body now all of these are working together all of these are working together and they are working for the larger good of the body as a whole how is it happening that's just how it is it's all very organized it's all happening in a very definite manner so all these cells are working together independently also they are just doing their you know their job and all the systems also are working together in harmony isn't it they are all doing this as part of their own self organization we are not having to coordinate and orchestrate all these systems it's not that i have to you know each time give direction now the heart you must keep beating we don't have to do all that it's already organized and it's happening so you'll find that each unit is self organized even within the self there is this self organization you will find that each time you have a feeling that is not naturally acceptable to you you feel unhappy you can't change that that's how it is so you can say yes yes i am i will be happy i can ignore the other person all of that but this is there that as long as my feeling is not in line with the natural acceptance there is bound to be unhappiness i cannot change that that is the part of my own self organization then you also see that the units are energized being in this coexistence these units are energized so they have some energy and you'll find that all the units are that way we can start from the self and we see that we have the capacity to think we keep feeling something we keep thinking something all that is going on within us but we are not you know we never seem to get tired of thinking in the sense that we are um, you know if the body suppose the body is sick so we give rest to the body but we are not able to give rest to this part the thinking continues only problem is we get tired when our thoughts are in conflict when our thoughts are not in line with the and our feeling is not in line with the natural acceptance but otherwise there is no tiredness we always seem to have the energy to keep thinking something or the other isn't it similarly you will see that everything in this existence every unit in this existence seems to have some energy where it's coming from we may not be able to pinpoint like we begin with saying no no everything on this earth we get the energy from the sun and so on but then where is the sun getting its energy from and so when you keep asking these questions then finally you have to come up with ultimately we don't know because it is already energized that's how it is in this existence being in this form where the units are submerged in space this is how it is that the units have this activity they are self organized they are self energized and they recognize the relationship and fulfill the relationship with each other 
this is how it is of course if you look at the space the space is unlimited there is no boundary it is all pervading and the other important big difference between the units and the space is space is no activity units being submerged in space have activity but space is no activity now if you look at the units the units are of two types the material units and the consciousness units so we already discussed this, this partly the material units are temporary and they have recognizing and fulfilling as the response and that is definite when it comes to the consciousness units the consciousness unit has not only recognizing and fulfilling but this recognition and fulfillment is on the basis of assuming or accepting this assuming or accepting can be on the basis of understanding or without understanding and till it is without understanding it is some assumption something we have accepted without knowing then our recognition and fulfillment may keep changing because the assumptions there is possibility of them going on changing so as the assumptions change the recognition and fulfillment also changes so now when we look at these units if we look at the material units for ease of study i mean we said we had classified nature into physical order bio order animal order and human order so let's look at this so if you look at the material units you start with the physical order and you can see that you know we've studied all this there are atoms then the atoms form molecules then those molecules form you know molecular structures lump fluid and so on from this physical order there is the formation of the bio order and you will find that in this physical order everything keeps breaking down and reforming breaking down and forming so it is all cyclic things are forming things are breaking down and this is happening all the time from the material or from the physical order there is formation of the bio order so there is formation of the cell from the cell there is more and more um what you call complexity starts happening with these cells coming together and you see that there is the plants the trees and so on this particular um such cells ultimately they are also forming the animal body and also the human body and here also you can see the cyclicity things are forming things are deforming plants trees they grow they decay they die go back to the soil cyclic animal body also same thing human body also same thing so this is about the material units when it comes to the consciousness unit the self when the self 
associates with an animal body, we say it is from the animal order. When the self associates with the human body, we call it human order. Right? And we will see that, you know, in the animal order, this um, recognition and fulfillment is on the basis of assuming. In the animal order, there is no capacity for, no potential for knowing. That potential is there only in the human being. So in the animal order, the basis for the recognition and fulfillment is assuming. But in the human order, we may begin with recognition and fulfillment being on the basis of assuming, but the potential for knowing, the potential for unfolding the higher activities is there. And that's where we have to reach. But we are almost out of time. So we will reflect on this.